our online viewers. Thank you for joining us. Remember to use our chat buttons to communicate with us. Share your testimonies. Ask questions. And we'll get back to you immediately after the message. Shall we rise up to pray? Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We thank you for this amazing and great day. This sad day that you have made, oh Lord, to bless, to remember us. Father, we thank you for the purpose of today's service will be established. We thank you for your presence in our midst. Father, we glorify your holy name. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm bringing to us a message titled, Remember. Remember. When people can remember where they are coming from, they run the risk of missing their destinations. When people can remember who has been with them, who has backed them so far, who has accompanied them, who has helped them, they run the risk of lining up behind the wrong company and the wrong leader. Hallelujah. Let's look at um, Deuteronomy chapter 8. We begin to read from verse 10. We are, we are reading nine verses there. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We read from verse 10 up to verse 19. The Bible says, When, when thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandment and his judgment and his statutes which I command thee this day. This, this was Moses preparing the children of Israel. Or rather, this was God himself preparing his people for the ultimate entrance into the uh, promised land. Verse 12 Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built godly houses, and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fairy serpents and scorpions and drought, which there was no water, where there was no water, who brought thee forth out, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the, out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy father knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee that the lo that okay to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thy heart, My power and the might of my hand had gotten me this world. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy father, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. You will not perish in the name of Jesus. Let's also read Psalms chapter 103. We read five verses from verse 1 to 5. Psalms chapter 103 from verse 1. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that Thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. I have read this scripture, that is Psalms 103, severally, 
without coming to terms with, the, with a, a very fundamental question that lies in that verse 1. Verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless the Lord. A very fundamental question is in that verse 1. And that is, how can a, a person bless God? How can the maid bless his maker? How can a helpless man bless a God that needs no help from any man? How can a limited man bless a limitless God? Upon creating man, the Bible recorded in Genesis chapter 1 verse 22 that God blessed man and said, be fruitful and multiply. Now, how can a being that depended on God to have his personality now be expected in turn to bless God? Thank God, David, you know this is one of the Psalms of David. David wrote half of the Psalms out of 150 Psalms in the Bible. 75 of them is attributed to David, while the others are attributed to other people, Abraham, Moses, and some other people you, you, you will not even imagine, and so on and so forth. Praise the Lord. Even the sons of Korah were attributed to have, to, to have written some few Psalms in the Bible, at least, I think one or two. But David wrote about half of the Psalms in the Bible. This one happened to be one of the Psalms of David. And David provided an answer for us, answer for that question in verse 2. Let's go there together, verse 2. Verse 2, Psalms 103, verse 2. Okay, it says, Psalms 103, verse 2, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. One of the ways we can bless God is not to be forgetful of his blessings, his giftings, his gifts, the things he has given us, not to be forgetful about them. God expects us to remember how far he has brought us and give him thanks for it. When we do so, we are blessing God. Even in natural things, when we create things, when, 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 a, when a car manufacturer manufactures, or when you set up a business, you expect that that business will bring you a, ret a return at the end of it. When we have children, we expect that the children will turn out good and meet some expectations. We expect them to make us proud. Those are ways they bless us. Those are ways they bless us. So in the same vein, God expects God expects thanksgiving, gratitude. God expects us to remember the things he has done. God is never God is never comfortable with forgetful generations or forgetful people. The, 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 the first uh, anchor scripture we read in Deuteronomy, in fact, if you, if you read from chapter 6 up to chapter 9, I, I believe, it was about preparing the children of Israel to enter the promised land. And one of the things God emphasized repeatedly in that preparation was the need for them not to be forgetful. In verse 7 specifically, he, he began to tell them, he said, remember, I am the Lord your God. Remember how I took you from Egypt. Remember how I gave you manna that no generation ever knew. Remember how your, 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 your clothes never tore on your body. Now as you are entering the land that I'm going to give you. That's in chapter 8 now. He began to tell them, you are going into a land where you are going to become very, very prosperous. You are going into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. When you go, there are chances are that you will be carried away. There will also be challenges, he told them. When you get there, there will be um, tendencies that you will be carried away and forget about me. He said, don't allow that. 
if you if you look at the 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 the, the great um, I mean the 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 Ten Commandments, the first two is about making God primary in our lives. He says, "I'm the Lord your God." The next uh, the next one after that talks about um, um, not having any other God but me. So God wants us at every time to remember him. Remember the things he has done for us. Remember how far he has brought us. Remember where he has brought us from. God blesses us with gifts. He expects us to bless him with gratitude. God blesses us with, with, with great things. He expects us to bless him in return with thanksgiving. That's what we are saying this morning. And we are going to leverage on this Psalms 103. And we are going to see some of the, some of the directions that King David here wants us to put in mind. And I see these four areas we are going to look at here this morning as generic. They are not exhaustive. They are suggestive. They are generic. They touch every area of our lives. And as we do that this morning, I want you to, in a remembrance mode, begin to remember. Remember specific. In fact, one of the ways King David advises us in this scripture to remember God is to remember in specifics what he has done for us. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see verse 2 down to verse 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefit. Verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. He now began to go in specifics. In specifics. When we remember God, don't just remember God as the God you are serving. Remember him for the specific things he has done in your lives. And this morning, we want to look at four dimensions of that specificity. Specifics. Hallelujah. Forgive, <laughs> forgive me. The thing is just jamming themselves in my mouth. Praise the Lord. We, we want to remember God in those specifics as David is leading us this morning. Even from Psalms chapter 103. The first thing we should remember God or the first area we should remember God for is that we should remember how he keeps forgiving our sins and then thank him for it. Verse 3 of Psalms 103, verse 3. The Bible says, who forgives present continuous tense. He has forgiven you yesterday. He has forgiven some of us this morning. And he's willing to forgive some of us immediately after service. And he is willing to forgive some of us tomorrow. He's even willing to forgive us after 2021 in 2022. God's mercies and forgiveness for us are always in the present continuous tense. It says, who forgives all your iniquities? Not one, not two. Different categories of iniquities. God forgives them all. Many of us won't be here today if the God we were serving were like Amadioha and the Shongos of this world. Those gods have no mercy in their vocabulary. Thank God for the coming of Jesus Christ that helped to whittle the powers of those gods and that, hopes to rem and that, and that helps to remove attention of, of people upon those gods. If we were still in that realm or in that generation where every worship or most of the worship were attributed to that God, most of us won't be here today. The day, you, the day you abused somebody, maybe your leader in your house that nobody knew, that God would have just in your house, they have killed you between quietly and, and people would be saying, uh, nah, they don't know what to kill them. But thanks be to our God who gives us the victory always through Christ Jesus. The Bible says that's the confidence we have in him that when we ask anything according to his will, including, Father, forgive me, he hears us. Hallelujah. So, in specific terms, can you remember some of the areas God has forgiven you? Remember them, remember them. 
usually at the end of every um, period in, in, in natural things, people take stock, people pause, organizations pause, individuals should pause, families should pause, and remember what God has done so that we will enter the new year in a new strength. If we are expecting anything from God, we will be expecting it from a new vista of hope. Knowing that there is a God that has brought us this far. Our expectations will not be on the basis of the fact that we just want to expect something. It will be that we know that there is a God that helps. And it's that God who has brought me this far. And I know that that God is able to carry me into 2022, 2023 and so on. But we have to, at certain moments in our lives, pause, remember and give thanks. And we are in that season now. Remember all the areas God has forgiven you. A man wrote a story. I read, I read, I read it in, in a publication. He said in 1968, when he was a teenager, he broke God's heart. He, he, he sinned against God. He knew he broke God, God's heart. He said he prayed seriously, cried to God, and he felt God has forgiven him. And then 10, ten years down the line, each year of that 10 years, every specific moment of his life, every milestone of his life, the devil will come and remind him of that sin. And he will feel like he was still looking miserable before God. And he will feel like God was still terribly angry against him. He will fall down again and cry. And cry until he feels an impression that God has forgiven him. He said he continued like that until the year he was about to get married. And the, the reminder came again. And reminded him of that sin. And he felt, no, no, no. Uh, God will not uh, bless my union because of this thing I had done. He said he prayed. The more he prayed, the more, he, the more terrible he felt. Then one day Jesus came to him. He said Jesus came to him in his room with a book in his hand. And as he entered his room, on that book, he saw his name written on that book. Jesus uh, dropped the book on the table. He didn't say a word. He was looking at him to pass a judgment. He didn't say a word. He began to open the pages of that book. Each page carried a year since he was born. From the first day he was born to the years he has spent. So as, as Jesus was turning, he was seen. Maybe he was born in 19... Uh, okay, I said 68, right? So let's assume he was born in 1950 because he was a teenager when, when, this, 68, when this incident of uh, sinning against God happened. Let's assume he was born in 1950, making him 18 years at that time. So as Jesus would open 1950, he would, rather than look at the book and see what Jesus was, uh, what was written there, he would, he, would, he would look at the book and look at Jesus' face, whether he was going to say anything. He said that continued... And when Jesus was approaching 1968, when he was at 1966, he, be, he began to pray in his heart that uh, he should, God should just make him to flip double, flip double pages so that he would flip 1968. And it continued until he came to 1968. He said his fear gripped him. His fear came upon him. And he was looking at Jesus. And Jesus stood there wait, wait, watching him. It then dawned on him to look at that page. He looked at the page. Lo and behold, it was white. It was, in fact, his description is that it was as white as snow. And he looked at it and looked at Jesus. And Jesus looked at him for, uh, for a while, closed, closed the book, and walked away. And he recovered from that experience with a, 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 a conviction that he had been forgiven long time ago from that 1968. So all those repeated prayers he was praying was like doubting the, the mercies of God. Many of us are here today. God had forgiven us severally. If God were to be man, God would have given up forgiving us. He would have given up forgiving us. Many of us rose from one sin, God forgiveness, entered another sin, God forgiveness. And that mercy was not exhausted. 
Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. The Bible says, it is of God's mercies. It didn't say mercy. Mercies, continuous mercies that were not consumed. So if God's mercies were to operate like Nepa, some of us would have gone. That time that the, that the mercy ceased, there was no mercy. Let's assume if it operated like Nepa and then you wake up, no mercy. Just like we used to wake up at times, there's no light. Wake up, there's no mercy. Satan will cash in on that. And because of that mercy, the continuity of that mercy, the persistence of that mercy, we are not consumed here today. Remember those things and thank God. Okay, he called some people miserable comforters. Some of us should be calling ourselves now, should be looking at ourselves as miserable sinners, if not for mercies of God. Hallelujah. So remember those moments. Give him thanks for it. Thank him. That's one of the ways you bless God. When we remember the things he has done, how he has forgiven us and how he has helped us and then we give him thanks for it. Hallelujah. If you are looking for a man who understands about mercy, go to David. No wonder he wrote many things about God's mercies. David, a man, a man that killed another man, a man that loved another man's wife, skillfully and uh, systematically snatched her from him. And when he ran into trouble living with her, he got her pregnant and was trying to cover the sin. He committed another sin by killing the husband. Yet this man was referred to in the Bible as a man after God's heart. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. The Bible referred to him as a man after God's heart. Why? Because of mercies. Hallelujah. So remember such moments and give him thanks. Another area where God expects that we remind him, or rather we remember him and give him thanks for it, is that we should remember his healings and, and thank him for it. Psalms 103, verse 3 still. Remember his healings. Not one, not two healings. He said, who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Not one disease, not two diseases. All manners of disease. Some of them didn't show up to your realization. Some of them, the grace and mercies of God had to kill them from, from their formative stages. God did not allow their symptoms to even get to you. God took care of them. During, uh, at the peak of COVID, if not for God's mercy, some of us won't be here today. I'm telling you, if not, for, if, if not for God's mercies, some of us won't be here today. Somebody said that many people in Nigeria caught COVID actually. Among those that caught it, there were those who did not know that they caught it and they were, they were fighting or treating something else and the grace of God intervened and helped them and they were healed. There were those who got it and knew they got it and God still intervened and healed them. And there were, there were also another group who got it and it didn't even show. And God's mercies worked together, activated their immune system and their immune system dealt with it and they were up and running. That God healed them. You remember that scripture in Ephraim? He said, I, 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 I healed them, but they did not know that I healed them. There were many of us in that category. So remember how God has healed us. Remember how he had healed. You know, some people used to say that there are different forms of healing. And they will say there is divine healing. There is physical healing. As far as I'm concerned, you can prove me wrong. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I have seen, from the little I've known from the scripture, every healing is divine. If you drink, if you had headache and drink paracetamol, it's the grace of God that enabled that paracetamol to heal you. If you had malaria and you took anti-malaria and you were healed, it's not that anti-malaria that healed you, it's God. Just like the source of every disease is spiritual, so must the source of the healing be divine. And divine is God. So every healing is divine. Whether 
you took something or you didn't take something. It's the divine enablement of God that accompanied that vessel of healing. The doctors used to say, we care, but God heals. We care, but God heals. So God uses the doctors, he uses the hospital, he uses the medications to heal us. So in all these healings, when it comes our way, let's remember that it is God. It's not parastamol that healed you. It's not anti-malaria that healed you. It's God. And let's return thanks to him. Hallelujah. A man also, a man, a story was told about a man, one of the kingpins of uh, Silicon Valley. You know, Silicon Valley is, is, is the home of IT in San Francisco, United States of America. His wife uh, became ill and was diagnosed with cancer. They took her to a, a hospital where she was paying, where they were paying an equivalent of uh, 350,000 naira a day just for oxygen. And he told the doctors, he said that they should not bother. They should, that money was not a problem. They should do everything necessary. That money was not a problem. And truly, money was not a problem. He had the money. Then after some days, the woman died. The story had it that he came to the open air and looked into the sky. And told money, shame to you. For those who depended on money, and who thought that money is the reason they were healed. A man that had all it takes to buy healing. Money could not help him. He went and shamed money with his own mouth. There are many who have died. Even during uh, COVID, I don't want to call them now, now for uh, political reason. There are many, you know them, who we are taking to the best hospitals in this land. Some of them had money even to, to be flown abroad, but they couldn't fly them abroad because flying them abroad was a risk on its own. So they had to be taken to the best hospitals in this land. Some of them still died, even with the money. So it's not money that heals us. It is God. So when, 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 we, when we are healed, no matter how small, headache, th give God thanks for it. Give God thanks for it. It's God. It's divine. So remember the healings. David was guiding us here. He's saying that part of the things we should remember and give God thanks. And in that way, bless God for who he is in our lives is the healings. It's the healings. Many of us have had pains. We don't know where it came from. And while we were worrying, some of us were even worried. And God still bypassed our worries and still healed us. While we were worrying, God, somehow you woke up one day, the pain was no longer there. There was a time I had a terrible pain on my back. And they said it was a, for a, a sedentary disease. You know, for sitting down a long while and so on. You know, a lot of things were, were, were prescribed. Massage here and there, exercise. It got to a point, I, I was just moving. I knew it was there. So, but I was cautious of it in doing certain things. When that pain disappeared, I didn't know. Who did it? God. It's not exercise. It's not that I shed my weight. That's why the thing left. Yes, I knew I started exercising to shed my weight. Have you not seen people who, who were exercising to shed weight and they fall down and die? Have you not seen? So shedding my weight is not a problem. It's that God used those avenues to bring healing to me. And I've got to recognize it and give him thanks for it. Hallelujah. The next area we, God expects that we remember him and give him thanks is remember how he redeemed you from destructions. From destructions. Psalms 103 verse 4. It says, who redeems your life from destruction? The word redeem as used here and as used in many places in the Bible actually means to snatch. To snatch away from somebody who is very powerful. Many times, God has literally snatched us away from very overwhelming situations that we didn't have solutions for. God snatched us out of them. And how we, we were delivered from such, we didn't know. All we knew is that we were delivered. Such moments should not be taken for granted. This is actually what Jesus did for us by going to the cross to die. 
Jesus snatched us out of the hand of darkness. We were helpless because by law we were to be condemned. But Jesus came, overpowered the thing that overpowered us and took us out of such moments. So remember how he redeemed you from destructions and thank him for it. There are many of such moments. If I give microphones here now, we won't go today. We won't go today. I remember how many years ago, I, I went with a group of friends to swim. I didn't know how to swim, but I just accompanied them. But I made a mistake. I went and boasted that I could swim. And when it was time to swim, I knew it was an, an empty boast. So I stood at the bank of the river. Ah, ah, oh boy, come and swim now. Don't worry. I don't swim this type of river. <laughs> it's only swimming pools I swim. I don't swim here. So I just stood at the bank of the river watching them. They were enjoying their swimming. Then one boy, out of curiosity, want, want, he wanted to see this, uh, this swimming skills of mine. He came through my back and gave me a push. I was still having my shoes on, my cloth, everything that I went to the, the, the river with. And that river was not a small river, I tell you. He just pushed me into the river. Boom! And I landed into the river and I went down. <laughs> I, in fact, I touched the bottom of the river and came up again. All I knew is that I, I was just seeing rumblings under the water. And after a while, I lost consciousness. The next time I knew myself, I was... I was out. I was, I was, they, were, they were pressing water out of my mouth and all corners and so on. And later on, I was ask, asking. They said they waited for me for a while. They didn't see me. Somebody had to dive in. They waited for me to exhibit that swimming skill. They didn't see. Somebody had to dive in and helped me. What if while they were waiting, I had passed on? Because I was actually drowning in that water. God kept me. Anytime I remember it, I laugh, but I thank God. I laugh at my foolishness, actually. But I end up thanking God for it. There was a day while playing football, I, 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 I played as a goalkeeper. I played as a midfielder. <laughs> One day I was a goalkeeper. Somebody played a shot. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I went on. You know, you know they used to try, if you want to catch a shot, for those who know about goalkeeping, if the, if the shot is direct, you catch it like, you catch it like this. If it's, if it's not too hot, if it's not a very hot shot, you can, you can hold it. But if it's too hot, you, you parry it. That's what they call it. Try to parry it away from uh, your environment. But this one came, I grabbed it. <laughs> when I grabbed it, my heart stopped. It just came, boom. The, the only thing I had was boom. And I went down with the ball. <laughs> bah! <laughs> and they thought, ha, they were clapping, this goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> and while, while there while there I was struggling to breathe I was just struggling to breathe from nowhere the, the, I, just, I just came back to myself again I just came back to myself again and stood up momentarily and became weak and went down again that was when they knew that something was wrong but I knew that it was beyond what they knew for a moment, I was, I, was, I was struggling to breathe. At that moment, I could have passed on and there could have been no me today. But the grace and the mercies of God kept me. That's another the, the, the deliverance from destruction. I know you have yours. I know you have yours. Every one of us have such moments. In times like this, remember such moments and thank him. Thank him. It's not always uh, give me this, give me Christmas shoes. Father, make sure that by 25th of December I have a bag of rice. Make the, it's not always about that. Sometimes we need to pause and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you for delivering me. To God be all the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you. We give you all the praise. Now finally, God expects that we remember him. Remember how he satisfies your wants with good things. The Bible says he satisfies our mouth with good things. If you understand the principle of satisfaction, for those that uh, did a little of 
economics, there is actually no satisfaction in life. Man will run from one fetish house to another is because moments of fellowship with those avenues or those mediums don't bring any satisfaction. They end up leaving you more miserable than you were at the last stage of, last stage of uh, satisfaction. In fact, the economist said that you will keep craving for satisfaction until your satisfaction starts dropping. So when you think you are coming to a point where you say, hey, I'm not satisfied, your satisfaction should start going down. That's diminishing returns. So as far as man is concerned, nothing satisfies like God. So the Bible says, he satisfies your mouth with good things. Hallelujah. So let's not take for granted such moments. Food on its own does not satisfy. It's God that makes food to satisfy you. The fact that you have food and you can eat and be satisfied, give God thanks. That's why I like this song that the children often sing. It said, some have food, but cannot eat. Some can eat and have no food. We have food and we can eat. Glory be to you, O oh Lord. I hope I got it. So, the fact that you have food is not what brings the satisfaction. It's the fact that there is a blessing that followed that food. And when I talk about food here today, I'm talking about everything that represents food. Money, clothing, wife, relationships. The fact that you have those things is not what brought you satisfaction. It's the fact that the blessings of God followed them. And you are where you are today. I know we are not yet satisfied. We are still craving for the next level of satisfaction. But at the point you are today, God has brought you to a level of satisfaction you should be grateful for. There are many who can't afford some of the things God has given us today. And there are many who are wishing they could be where we are today. What I'm doing here today, I'm helping us take stock, as every organization will do at this time of the year. Take stock of... Uh, the activities, take stock of the things you have done, take stock of your projects, see how well you have done, uh, give appreciation to, to your team members, give appreciation to, to those who led those operations that brought you successes, learn from your mistakes. That's what we are doing here today. And as we live here, let this process continue. Have a time to pause as a family. Remember how God has helped you. Remember how the blessings he has released that has brought you this far. Remember the healings. Remember, remember, okay, let, let me take it according to the other. Remember how he forgave your sins and keeps forgiving your sins. Remember uh, the healings. Some of them you did not even know about. He healed you. Remember also how he satisfies your mouth with good things. They remember how he redeems you from every destruction. He never allowed you to be destroyed or to be consumed. Hallelujah. So part of the ways God expects that we can bless him is to remember him. And I tell you, one of the ways we can bless God in this season is to remember those who don't have. Is to remember those who don't have. Remember those who, who are craving for your current level of satisfaction. They are saying, when they see you, they are praying, they are saying, God, oh, if only I can be half of, if only I can get to half of where this person gets to. Remember such people. If, if God can, 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 can lay in your hands to be a help, remember them. This is one of the ways we can bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Remember also the benefits God gave you above others. And in such moments, remember them and be a help. Hallelujah. So there is so much to reflect from what we have to reflect on from what we have said today. This list from David, as in Psalms 103, is not exhaustive, like I said before. 
David is just guiding us on how to remember God and give him thanks. As you go home, remember God for who he has been, for what he has done, for how he has impacted you personally and even as a family. Hallelujah. So there are many things he has done for you that fall under these four areas we have talked about today. There are many things. Remember them in specifics and give him thanks for what he has done. So what God is telling us this season is that we should be specific in thanksgiving. Be specific. And you can't be specific if you can't remember. You can't be specific if you can't remember. Hallelujah. Let's stand us with give God thanks this morning. There is no one here today who can convince me beyond every reasonable doubt like they used to say that you have no reason to give God thanks. No one of us here. No one, no one of us here. Big, small. Everybody has a reason to thank God. I'm giving you just 10 seconds. Remember one. If you can't remember many, just remember one. And we're going to spend the next five minutes thanking him. I want you to be involved. Don't, don't, don't mind who is by your side. Do you think it's easy to have a good husband? Do you think it's easy to have a good wife? Do you think it's, 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 just, it's just mere, mere occurrence to have? Are you here? You want to give your life to Christ? I would like to pray with you before I step down this morning. Just raise up your hands and let's pray. Just raise up your hands and let's pray wherever you are. Is there anyone? Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Mighty God, we worship you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for great things you have done. Thank you for even in this season. Father, lead us through it. Let us remain in, a, in an attitude of thanksgiving. Have your way, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I remember your faithfulness. I remember your giftings. I remember your love. I remember your mercies and compassion. I remember your deliverances. Father, we remember. Therefore, we are grateful and we are thankful. We lift our offerings in thanksgiving unto you, Lord. Accept these offerings. Let them come unto you as sweet smelling server. And let your name be exalted. Give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. So give your, if you have your tithes, also drop in the basket. <laughs>